Hi lovelies, this is Blossom from Tales Unfold and today I want to discuss the work of energy healing for animals. We will have a look how you can do it, if you need any kind of attunement for it and how you can practice it safely for yourself and your furry friend. But before we begin, if you like this type of content, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so I can create more content for you. It really helps my channel. Thank you so much. So many of us have pets at home or are taking care of animals in one way or another. And of course we care deeply for them. They are our family members and we want to make sure they have everything they need. And as you go through your own healing journey, you may want to include them just to share the experience maybe maybe your animal is sick your your furry friend is ill in any way or maybe you just adopted a rescue dog and you want to ease the transition into their new life or you're just curious about it and want to know how they react to it and all of this is wonderful so and i want to make clear even if you are not attuned to reiki so i'm gonna say Reiki throughout this video, but even if you are not attuned to Reiki, it's still possible for you to uh, do an energy healing on your animal, on your pet, on your dog, cat, whatever it is. And so just to simplify it, I will just go with Reiki, but whatever method is good for you, whatever you are uh, trained in or however you want, you, oh, you perform your own energy work, uh, it's gonna be fine for your uh, for your animal. You can perform an energy healing either in person or in animal, <laughs> or you can also offer distant treatments if you work with clients, or even if you just want to um, help a friend's animal. Uh, distant sessions work just as well. They are both equally well. And uh, you have to see yourself what your own personal preference is, what is more practical. But if it's, for example, your own animal, you're probably going to do it in person with contact. So let's have a look at that. So an in-person session. What is really important before you start any kind of healing work on an animal is to understand their body language. So if it's your own pad, you're probably very aware of their body language, how they show you if there's any discomfort or unease and when they are really relaxed. However, it's never bad to freshen up on the knowledge of, um, of their body language. A horse will react differently than a dog, a cat is different again. So just get a good understanding of how they show stress signals or signals of an ease. That is the first thing before you even start with energy healing to really comprehend and have a, and have a good grasp on body language. The introduction. Before you begin any session, if it's your own pet that you want to treat, it's fine if you just state to them their intention. You don't have to introduce yourself, they know you. But if it's a stranger, a strange animal, then you start a session with introducing yourself by name, if you like, in your mind, right? You don't have to talk out loud, just in your mind, introduce yourself to them. Tell them who you are and what you intend to do. And then something that is also very important is fill yourself up with love and compassion and gratitude that you are able to help this beautiful soul. Bring that really in, take a few breaths to do that. And then you fill yourself up and this will shine outwards and it will shine through your energy field, through your aura. Because if you are a bit nervous, it is possible the animal will pick up on it and they will refuse to get the treatment. Because as you introduce yourself, and as you tell them, hey, I want to do this energy healing for you, they can also refuse the offer, right? It is up to them. It's not up to you. It's not for you to prove yourself or that you want to push anything on them. It's up to them. If they do refuse it initially, you can still come back at a later point. Maybe do a meditation before if you're really nervous about it. Just calm down a little bit. It might just be the nervous energy. Some 
animals also just don't want it and we have to respect that. Then leading the session. When the animal agrees to the energy healing session, then connect to source, to Reiki or whatever you use, okay? Connect to it as you usually do. As I do Reiki, I connect to the Reiki source, I will put my hand into Gasho and I will use a little prayer. I will also call upon my guides and thank the Reiki energy and ask it to flow through me, through my whole being, through my hands and palms. Then I will draw the symbols on my third eye and my palms. And after that, I will let the dogs come to me if they are not already around me. And before I even start laying hands on them or anything, I will let them explore. And my dog Nova, she's usually very, very curious about Reiki. She really starts instantly to sniff my hands and then she even starts licking them for a while before I can put it anywhere on her body. She's just really sometimes baffled by it, I want to say. My other dog, Gwyn, is a bit different. He will just show me his belly and yeah, go for it. I'm ready. Do whatever you want. <laughs> He doesn't need much ritual around it or anything. Nova is more... She's a lady and... <laughs> she's a real lady and she checks everything carefully. And Grin is, you know, well... <laughs> he's just, yeah, go for it. I'm good. <laughs> so usually I will sit on the floor with them while I do Reiki so everybody of us can be comfortable or at least they are comfortable. I might just not be. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> so and what is important from here on is that you let them lead the session. So they will probably show you on, in one way or another where they want you to put your hands. So don't follow a rigid structure that you learned that you have to go from this chakra to this chakra over to that chakra. Just let them lead. They will show you. If you start, for example, at the belly and you would have a dog or a cat or whatever animal uh, and and they would um, they wouldn't like it just there they want you to start at the head they might just you know start uh, showing you uh, where you should put your hands my my uh, my dog Nova she's actually very very persistent in that she actually kind of grabs my hand with her paw and she directs me really to where she wants it. So that is very, actually that is very good to have a dog who tells you exactly where they want it. If they don't show you anything, then, then do as intuition tells you, right? But be very careful and very observant. observant. Um, usually often in a lot of my energy healing so a lot of the healing i do is over distance and i always close my eyes so i do have to remind myself when i work with my own dogs that i have to keep the eyes open and not just like whoosh <laughs> fall into it because i really need to observe them is their breathing steady are they nice and relaxed is there any sign of distress unease stress, anything like that. Um, so I would uh, recommend to, to keep your eyes open so you can observe them closely. Why that is important, especially if you do it with your own animal, is they are actually more likely to endure any unease for you. If you do it with another animal that you don't know well, well, they are, prob they are cl probably clearer in, yeah, no, I don't want that, go away. But yeah, so be, be mindful about that. A session can last only a couple of minutes or it can, up, it can go up to half an hour or so. Again, your dog, your dog, your pet, sorry, I have dogs. So. Your pet is going to show you exactly when they have enough. They will just get up and thank you and bye and that's it. <laughs> Sometimes, they might just show it in another way. They uh, might just sit up and start licking your face or anything like that. Um, they are the leaders. So let them lead you and let them guide you and uh, just listen to them. They know what they need and how much of it they need and for how long they need it. 
So after a session, I will still clear their aura if they didn't completely run off. So I still do an aura sweep and then I will put them in a protective bubble. Again, using the symbols so that the energy can still work over the day and it still remains the energy healing is still taking place even if we close that session now. And then I thank the Reiki energies, I thank my guides and everybody who showed up for this healing session and I will close down. I, I stop the flow through myself and uh, my hands and palms. And then I also will close the portal or the doorways that might have been open during this healing session. After you finish your session, again, be observant. How do they behave now? Are they just going, are they just sleeping, really relaxed? Do they go straight for a drink? Are they really excited and they want to go outside and play? Or are they just playful in the house? Just observe it, make some notes maybe, so especially if it's your own pet, but also if you use with clients, right? Um, take some notes on how they behave afterwards and also in the following days to come, of course. Now for a distance healing. So it's somewhat similar, but a few differences are there, obviously. But you still start a distance session by introducing yourself to the animal. So you might have a photo of the animal or you, I don't know, just a name, just a location with whatever you connect with. Um, still introduce yourself, tell them who you are, what you intend to do. So same as when you do it in person. And also the same is you fill yourself up with love, compassion and gratitude. So because this shines through time and space, you don't need to be in the same room. It will show up for them. If you fill yourself up with so much love and so much compassion and gratitude, they will pick that up. And again, the way I do it, I will connect to Reiki then, to Source, and I will ask for the Reiki energies to flow through me. I will also use the symbols again to fill myself up with Reiki. Again, first starting in, in Gasha position, fill myself up with Reiki using the symbols, and then also will use the distance symbol to strengthen that connection to the animal. I also really like to use proxies. So I will always use a teddy bear for uh, the animals. I usually have a little fox that I use. Uh, for humans, I have teddy bears. <laughs> but in this case, for an animal, I usually have a little fox or whatever, you know, depending. <laughs> and I use that as a proxy to focus my energy upon. And then with this proxy in place, I will start to build up a chi ball around it. So everybody has probably a bit of their own method, how they do that. If you are doing Reiki, you probably know how to build up a, a chi ball. If not, let me know. And all that healing energy will now flow into that chi ball. And then again, I will use all the different symbols that I feel that I feel are necessary to send in there. So I will send all those symbols in there. And then depending, sometimes I will use the energetic sound patterns of an instrument or of crystals or of plants and herbs. That really depends on um, what I have discussed beforehand with the owner of the animal or the companion of the animal. Better, right? <laughs> and um, then we go from there. Or it's just pure intuition that, um, that leads me or guides me of what needs to be done and what needs to be sent into that chi ball. It's not that different for me creating a chi ball and, and uh, the, using the proxy. It's, that's pretty much absolutely the same like I do with humans. So usually I need between 20 to 30 minutes to create it, but if it's longer, it's longer, you know to really send as much energy as I can into it. So, and while you do that, be mindful of images you might receive, any kind of impressions, if, you get, if, if any feelings come up, all of that, be mindful of it, no, notice it, and write it down later for the owner of the animal or the companion of the animal. 
You do that, of course, in an in-person session too. I forgot to mention that, I think. So, you know, rem be mindful of it. Just be aware and let those impressions come to you. It might say something important to you. Maybe, maybe not. And then I also, over distance, I will do an aura cleanse, put them in a protective bubble and uh, still let those energies work their way and then I will send the chi ball their way on, on however we discussed that beforehand. And then the client can open that chi ball for the animal for whenever they are relaxed. So often that is in the evening after they had their supper, um, then just opening the chi ball for the animal and they can receive it then. So and the distance treatment is of course very beneficial for animals that are nervous or even fearful around strangers. So you don't have to put that stress on them, a stranger coming to their home or even take them somewhere uh, where, where everything is unknown and they are still afraid of, of strange things that they are not familiar with. That is then very beneficial for, for animals because it could also be if you offer animal Reiki or animal energy healing and you drive to a client and you get there, you had an hour drive and then you get there and then the animal is, yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> you know, I drove all that way. You cannot be frustrated about it, right? But uh, of course it's then a long way. And in those cases, distance treating are working out quite well. And in this way, I also think that Reiki or energy healing is very, very good to use if you want to give Reiki to the animals in rescue centers, right? Because not every rescue center will be up for it for you to come in and disrupt the routine of it, which is, can be quite strict and has to be a certain way. And a lot of those animals that are in rescue centers are very, very stressed and strangers coming in and out is not going to be beneficial for them because they are so stressed, they are in fear, they are having really trouble with many things, maybe, you know, not, not, every, not every animal will. But, and if you offer Reiki that way over distance to, uh, to the animals in a rescue center, that is just really a beautiful thing. Remember, it's not for you. It's not for you to go there and cuddle with as many dogs and cats um, as you want to, but it's really about helping them. And, um, you know, it's not for, for to get that, that, oh, you're so great. Thank you for helping us. It's not about that. It's just you do it, right? without trying to get any kind of recognition for it, recognition for it. Also remember, you're not giving Reiki, you are offering it. Or you're not giving an energy healing, you are offering it. You are offering it. It is up to them, to the individual animal, if they want to take it or not. And that's it for today. So if you have any questions, or if you want to know how you can actually perform a uh, an energy healing without being attuned to Reiki, please leave me a comment so, and I might, you know, I can maybe do a video about that if that is something that anybody is interested in. Thank you so much for watching. I hope your world is kind. Much love and bye.